McDonald's has just reported its earnings in the pre-market. It is down 1.5% is now a good time to buy this company. We're gonna take a look at the historical performance of McDonald's Corporation. We're gonna take a look at their top line growth, their bottom line net income growth over the last few years. We'll look at the health of the company, their total cash versus their total debt. We'll also see how well they perform versus some well-known competitors in the industry. We'll talk about their dividend safety. We'll run through some supporting financial metrics. We'll discuss a lot of insider selling that has happened over the last few months. And as always, we'll look to the institutions, whether or not in the more recent quarters they have been buying or selling. And as always, we will touch upon their earnings report, get the details to see how good or how poor it really was. And we will run them through the valuation model, getting to the intrinsic value as well as the acceptable buy price given that margin of safety. And look towards Wall Street to see what their price target is for the next 12 months. So let's jump into their earnings report firstly. So we can see the headline reads that they revenue miss estimates as the Middle East conflict weighs on their quarterly sales. So the, some of the key points, we will run through the numbers, but they did report some mixed results. They beat on the earnings estimate. However, they did miss on revenue due to international markets lagging. And they did say that one of the largest issues they had was the conflict in the Middle East, which hit the sales in the region. So let's take a look at the actual numbers then. So earnings per share, 295 adjusted versus 282. Nice to see they did beat on the earnings per share. Revenue, as we can see here, they did come under by around 40 million, 6.41 billion reported versus 6.45. Their net sales also rose 8% to 6.41 billion, which was positive. But as we can see, their global same store sales grew 3.4%, falling short of that 4.7 target that analysts had, again, due to the Middle Eastern sales struggling. Now, in terms of the forward looking, one thing that is interesting that I did want to point out from this article is that they are expecting in 2024 to open more than 2,100 new locations as part of their broader strategy. So they really want to accelerate in the expansion, reaching a lot more customers. And they expect this will cost them around two and a half to 2.7 billion moving forwards. So it will be interesting to see how this does affect their annual report in 2024, 2025. But it does look to be that McDonald's is looking to aggressively essentially accelerate their expansion. So let's take a look at the historical performance. Over the last year, they are up 13%. We can see they are trading in the mid to upper end of the 52 week range. Over the last year, they are up 210%. Bear in mind, it doesn't include those dividends reinvested, but they aren't far off their all-time highs, which they did hit a few weeks ago. Dividend yield sits at 2.25%, forward PE 25.14. And just for full transparency, as I have discussed McDonald's on other episodes, this is one of my larger positions in the portfolio. So let's take a look at their top line revenue growth. As always, 3 to 7% is what we'd like to target year on year. 21 billion reported in 2018, 23 billion in 2022, and the annual report for 23 expecting around 25 billion. So we can see, yes, it has increased over the period, but not at a very fast rate that we like to see. In fact, 2018 to 2019, it was flat. It then decreased into 2020 before increasing into 21, again flat in the next year, and then an increase of around 10% in 2023. So very mixed. Yes, it does increase over the last five years, but it isn't at a very fast rate. And we'll discuss that when we look at the last 10 years percentage wise. In terms of bottom line, a better story to paint there, 5.9 billion reported in 2018, 6.2 billion reported in 2022, 2023 around 8.3 billion. So we do see increases, in fact, larger than the bottom, the top line growth. However, again, we do see some similarities, growth to 2019, a decrease to 2020, an increase to 21, before decreasing in 2022, and then an increase. So very, very inconsistent. In fact, both top line and bottom line regardless of the fact that it does increase over the period. Quick look at the health of the company. Total cash, 866 million reported in 2018. 3.5 billion in their latest report. So they do have a fair amount of cash. It is a lot more than they had five years ago. Now, numerically and directionally, total debt, 31 billion. This has increased to around just under 50 billion. So their total debt is increasing. It is something we'll touch upon when we look at the dividend safety, but just something to make you aware of that their debt levels are rising. And we do expect it will continue to increase with the opening of those 2,100 stores. 
Quick look then versus some other restaurants in the industry. We have Starbucks, Chipotle, as well as a few well-known others. Now, over the last year, McDonald's, in terms of total return, is up 15.41%. One of the mid-performing in the industry, when we expand that, we do see that it is up around 88%. The second best performing, second to the incredible Chipotle, which is up around 370%. So not too bad, 80-90%, fairly decent, but again, bear in mind, past performance isn't an indicator of future performance. Now, I always like to be transparent to also look at the insider sales, even though I feel like insider buying is a much, much better metric to discuss because insider selling, it isn't necessarily bearish. As always, insider sell for personal financial reasons. The buying is, in my opinion, a bullish signal. It means management are buying because ultimately they believe the share price will go up. Nonetheless, we can see the chief people officer as well as the president of McDonald's USA, Joseph. They have both sold on many occasions over the last few months. And we can see here, in fact, around 3 million worth of sales. Now, interesting or not interesting, something to point out. We do see that since they have bought the share price, in fact, since they did sell, the share prices have, in fact, increased since then. So, again, this isn't something that I would say is a very important metric to consider. But as always, it is nice to see regardless as part of the investment thesis. Institutional ownership, well, 68%. In terms of sales by these institutions, it sits around 9 billion over the last 12 months. Same period, a lot more buying, 155 billion over the same period. The largest inflows coming in in Q2 of 2023. But ultimately, what you can see quarter to quarter, year over year, there isn't a lot of buying or selling by the institutions. McDonald's does seem to be a fairly staple part of their portfolio. And as always, do your own due diligence, never solely rely off what the institutions are doing. So let's take a look at the dividend safety score, 77, it is safe. Market cap, 215 billion, it is a mega cap company. Last recession, well, they increased the dividend during 0709. Above average growth, negative 6% versus negative 12 of the S&P. And this is phenomenal. If you're a regular viewer, you understand this. Recession return of only negative 3% versus the S&P's negative 55%. When you look at the other companies we run through, there are a lot of companies that have a much, much higher recession return, which is negative. McDonald's is one of the very few with a very good recession return. Again, past performance does not mean future performance. They did increase just under 10% in October last year. Nice to see. 8% over the last five years, double digits over the last 20 years. Very, very nice to see. We love double digit increases to the dividend on this channel. They're a dividend aristocrat. They have increased those dividends over the last 25 years or more, and they are four years away from in becoming a dividend king. So dividend king status is when a company pays increasing dividends for 50 years or more. In terms of dividend yield theory, well, it may come as a surprise to you, but this looks like a reasonable valuation with both the current yield in line with the five-year average as well as the forward PE in line with the five-year average as well. But when we look at the consumer discretionary sector PE, it sits at 14.7, much lower than McDonald's. Now, in terms of the free cash flow payout versus the earnings payout, this is, in my opinion, susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting. We run through a ton of examples on the channel. So today we'll draw your attention to the free cash flow payout. Below 60% is my preference. You can go industry specific and do below 60 or 50 for restaurants. What we can see, it has been decreasing over the longer term. 2022 at 76%, 2023 expected 62, 2024 expected 54. I am expecting another very strong, very high single digit increase to the dividend or a very low double digit increase for McDonald's dividend in 2024. Free cash flow per share. Nice to know it has been increasing over the last 10 years. Okay, it hasn't been very consistent. Nonetheless, it is moving in the right direction year on year. 9.86 in 2023, 12.4 expected in 2024. Lots of positives to note for shareholders. Now, one thing that isn't great, we always like to see steady moderate growth, 3 to 7%. But what we note here is 2014 to 2020, pretty poor on that top line, negative growth year on year. 2021 was very positive. 2022, not great at all. We can see 0% flat. 2023 in the latest annual report, 8% increase. It is nice to see. So bear in mind, their top line has been decreasing for a vast majority of the last 10 years. And as we can see here, going from 28 billion in 2013 to 25 billion in 2023. What's very nice to see is they have done nearly 30% of share buybacks over the last 10 years, decreasing the shares outstanding, which in essence returns excess cash to investor pockets. Always great to see. 
ROIC, one of my seven golden dividend metrics. I don't really want to be investing in companies that don't have 10% as a bare minimum. The reason for this, it gives me faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital. A little bit inconsistent, but nice to note in 2022 and 2023 in the mid-20s, looking very positive. Operating margin and free cash flow margin both tell me a very similar story. Not only are they consistently above the minimums we look for, but they are increasing. So we see the operating efficiency of management and the company getting better year on year. And the same can be said here for the free cash flow margin. So as an investor myself in this company, this is something I love to see. Net debt to EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. Remember, balance sheet strength, dividend safety. These are the two indicators from here. 2023 at 3.48, so the number of years it would take them to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. I want to see it below that. It is a little bit too high for my liking, pretty much on that maximum. Nice to note, 2024, it is expected to come lower. Now, before we jump into the valuation, just to let you know, we have released a free weekly newsletter. Last week's episode was on the yield on cost, whether or not high dividend or low dividend yields really matter in the grand scheme of things. The week before, we looked at undervalued companies with strong upside, as well as looking at our seven golden dividend metrics running through our screener for undervalued companies. Completely free. If you want to join up, then click on that pinned comment below. So let's get into the valuation of MCD. As always, if you enjoy the videos, if you take any value, smash that like button, hit the subscribe and bell button, so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. So let's jump into the first model that we're using for today's episode. We have the multiples valuation model. We have those companies we ran through, similar sector and size. Average P multiplied by the earnings per share of MCD to get an intrinsic value of $322 with our sign of undervaluation. Just keep in mind we don't look at any of these models in isolation. We then have the dividend discount model, the yearly dividends, looking pretty nice in my opinion. On average, 7.6%. We have gone more conservative and lower than the average. And we do see here the second signal of undervaluation, intrinsic value based on this model at 354. We then move on to the DCF model, free cash flow year on year. Average 6%, we've gone in line with analyst estimates. In conjunction with the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by shares outstanding, and we see our third and final signal of undervaluation. As always, the intrinsic value is just the average of the models that we run through, and in today's episode, it comes to $330. Don't forget, you can grab a copy of the valuation model if you want to get to the intrinsic value and acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio or on your watch list by clicking on the pinned comment below. Margin of safety, 10%. We use this if we believe it has a wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward-looking data. 10%, it is pretty much near enough the current trading price at 297 at 15%, you're looking around 280. So right now, if you were to buy, you would be getting between a 10 to 15% margin of safety. Now, my own personal strategy, this is one that I have had for many years, one of the largest positions in my portfolio, and I would love to continue to add. However, at this price, it isn't one that I will be looking to continue to add to the portfolio. I'd be waiting for around 20% at a minimum, a 15%. So anywhere between 260 to 280 is where I would add more shares. However, do let me know your thoughts in the comments below, whether or not you are adding based off on this small drop after the earnings. In terms of Wall Street and what they forecast, well, they have 12% upside over the next 12-month period with a price target of $326. As always, drop your comments below. Have a great day. If you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button. I'll see you on the next one. And for now, take care.